What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to The Order. I wanted to make an updated video to the previous Brig build I posted a week or so ago for Skull and Bones, mainly because that build is now essentially outdated due to the arrival of Season 1. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of those changes, saw some really good suggestions and advice in the comments of the last video, and some things I had to tweak because of the new season. Now, the general conceit of this build that I've been using is largely still the same. This is a ship that is going to be capable of handling just about anything in the game. It really excels in close range and closing the gap on an opponent. I've used this build in PvE during plunders, taking on the boss level encounter against Lepest. It's also helped me win some hostile takeover PvP matchups thanks to its solid damage and survivability combo. So yeah, let's get right right into it. So the major reason for the updated build is because ship rank 12 is now in the game. Previously you could only get a ship to rank 11, but the cap has been raised officially to 14 though 12 appears to be the limit based on the maximum gear scores that are available in the game currently there is a damage reduction and damage bonus baked into the game based on how much higher an enemy ship is to you so for example in fighting La Peste, who is a level 13 ship you're going to want your ship to be at least 12 to make up some of the difference it's very noticeable when you play so in order to get to ship rank 12, I've swapped out the fire bombard threes in the bow and stern and replaced them with the Dardanelles. These are purple tier bombards you can get from the black market. I've also had them drop in the very old treasure chest you can get from fighting La Peste. Again, I'm a big fan of bombards since they offer great splash AoE. Uh, you can use them on towers, just an overall fantastic weapon and Dardanelles are a upgrade on the fire bombard threes and again the gear score being higher allows us to get closer to ship rank 12. Now for the port and the starboard we are still using the zamzamas because they are awesome just generally speaking and they synergize really well with the major furniture piece which is also remain the same. Uh, I just love how you can essentially shotgun blast like multiple weak point spots uh, with these when you're running parallel to another ship. They are absolute wrecking machines still. Now for the auxiliary, I have been using the new poison mortar that's available in the black market. Uh, though with some of the other changes I made to the ship, uh, I can also use the Leopold 3 still since I'm still at ship rank 12. Uh, again, the Leopold 3 is an excellent mortar weapon that adds flooding. It has a really, really awesome high base damage. Uh, the new poison mortar has a lower base damage but does leave a poison cloud in the area. This isn't as effective though if you are in a chase situation or you're fighting an enemy that is you know moving because that poison cloud is not going to do anything as they're going to move out of that area. It's really something you want to be using in encounters where you're going to be fighting enemies that are essentially clustered in an area and it's going to be really effective for that. So again for me the Leopold 3 is ultimately still going to be my main choice here in the auxiliary slot and uh, it's an, an excellent excellent mortar weapon to go with this brig build. Now, the major furniture piece is still the scrapper station. Again, because of the way it synergizes with the Zamzamas, it uh, gets us into our crew attack significantly faster with the Zamzamas. And so with that 20% whole health you're getting back from this particular uh, furniture piece, this allows you to stay in you know, pretty much any single battle because you're getting increased sustainability, you know, a, an additional way to get healing, which is massive and long encounters or when you're dealing with multiple enemies. Again, you're getting healing back from crew attacks and as well as crew boarding 20% uh, of your whole health. It's an excellent choice uh, for a more sustainable, survivable build that you're going for. Uh, as for the rest of the furniture, uh, we did add the La Potence schematics. This is the new furniture piece that's in the Smuggler's Pass. Uh, if you go down the Quartermaster track, you're going to need this to see the weak points on the fleet of Pestilence ships, but it also gives you a 10% bonus to weak point damage just in general, which is honestly just excellent, right? For the rest of the furniture, we're going to use the balance mass for increased maneuverability, 8% increased acceleration and deceleration. This is really solid. Uh, one big change for my furniture loadout is going to be adding the iron cladding station. This is going to give us a 25% bonus to ramming damage. Now, ramming has become a bigger focus for me since the brig ha does have that bonus perk to it and you add that flooding effect as well. So I've decided to lean into it a bit more as a nice 
opener and a lot of attacks against like higher level ships and it's been pretty busted so this has been a nice uh, addition to the loadout and to the build and uh i do recommend it if you're using a break and you are finding yourself ramming more often than not 25 percent additional ramming damage is pretty solid overall and then finally, uh, I'm using the leather rope grips to help with some of the stamina consumption from trimming the brig sails uh, when you're hitting those top speeds. So just generally speaking, really trying to buff out the ship overall rather than I think previously on my last build, just adding 10% damage here and there. I feel like these have rounded out the ship a lot better. Finally, for the armor, uh, this is again subject to change as the Ouroboros uh, is arriving with the new sea monster encounter, and I'll be making a separate video about that. But for now, I'm still Team Black Prince for that 50% damage reduction at 30% of your whole health. It's just an excellent perk, but again, this is subject to change. And that just about covers this new brig build. Again, let me know in the comments below what you're rocking on your brig for season one of Skull and Bones, and has anything changed about your brig from the uh, previous sort of season zero period of the game. So far, I'm really digging what the season has offered in terms of new challenges, the smugglers pass, all the new rewards, uh, the new cosmetics are also very sick. Uh, the new ship, which we'll be talking about in another video. I'm really excited about the overall direction of the game right now. Like I'm really, really pumped about where Skull and Bones is at right now. And there's so many new things still coming to the game that uh, again, I'm just genuinely really excited about, man. Uh, if you found this video helpful or insightful at all, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe to the channel for more gaming coverage and insight. Until next time, have a good one.